Hello, welcome to Anselm Griffin's Occasional Series in YouTube Tutorials. Today we're doing a statistics problem, one of my own exam papers, and this is from the 2014 exam paper. And we're going to give a quick run through about this. Now, hopefully I don't go too fast, but just enough to give you some idea about how to answer the question. So, uh, we're doing question one, which is multiple regression analysis, which is kind of like a line of best fit. Now, apologies, I'm assuming you know some things here. So we're saying y equals a constant plus b1x plus b2x squared. So y is dependent on x and x squared. So what's x in this thing here? Reliability of these fragmented shale as a rock field construction. So the stress-strain relationship with the fragmented model. So y is here the reliability as a construction material and it's the stress strain model here so how many we i've given the analysis of variance table here and just to note here i know you could do it other ways but the the df the degrees of freedom for the model plus the degrees of freedom for the error must equal the degrees of freedom for the total. Likewise, the sum squared for the model plus the sum squared for the error equals the sum squared of the total. Okay, so that's how to do the first first two columns here. Now, how do we work out this value here? Well, you could say, what plus 10 equals 12? Well, obviously 2, but where does the 2 coming from? Well, going back to the quadratic model, y equals how many x's are there? I know other people look at it. How many x's are there in this? Well, there's the constant. So many x here. So many x squareds here. So how many x's are in the um, regression equation? There's two. There's the x and the x squared. So I have this done in a spreadsheet out here. So the first number I'm going to put in here is two. And then I want to fit in this number here. Now, the only way of doing this is saying, that number plus that number equals that number, or in other words, this number here, SS total equals uh, SS sum plus SS error. Now in this case, we know what SS total is, we know what SS model is, so this one in here is simply equal D7 minus D5. Now obviously you'd be on your calculator at home or in the exam doing it that way. So we get those two numbers there. How do I get the mean square here? How do I get the mean square for the model? Well, it's the sum squared value divided by the df. So going as slowly as I can, that equals d5, the sum squared for the model, divided by the degrees of freedom for the model, which is c5. Okay. And how do I get the mean square for the error? Well, it's the sum squared for the error divided by the df for the error. So that is equal d6 divided by uh, c6. Right. How do I get the f value out here? The f value is the mean square model divided by mean square error. So that equal e5 divided by e6. Okay, so we have that done. Now, the standard error and the r squared. So the standard error is the square root of this lad here. So the standard error is the square root of uh, the mean square error, which is this square here, so that's the square root of e6. And the r squared value, now you'd have to know this, r squared equals, I don't have this, I'm just trying, 1 minus ss resid. over SS total. So that is 1 minus SS resid over SS total. So that's D6 divided by D7. 
So we get 0.99. So the R squared value, how well do the points fit the model? What's the model of y equals b naught plus b1x plus b2x squared? Is very, very high. Remember, the closer it is to 1, the, the, the points lie in the line almost exactly. So what have I done so far? I've gone done part A. I haven't done part B. And uh, I've actually done part D. So just to say, let's do part D here. Yeah, I know I'm not doing this in quite quick order. Standard error. Very small compared to uh, SS error. So, 188 versus, uh, well actually I suppose that should be SS total really. Sorry about that. Versus uh, 57, 644, 230.8. So in other words, the standard error is very small. And the R squared value is very, very high. The points lie in the line. Very, they fit very well. So the error is going to be quite small. So the answers are complementary. Part B. Uh, every single time. H naught. You write this down every single time. B naught equals... Sorry. B1 equals B2 equals b3 equals dot 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 bn equals zero. Now what's that saying in, a, oh, in ha? At least one of the b's does not equal zero. Now what's that in English? I, as I say to my class regularly, HO is all the slopes of the X terms are zero. HA, at least one of the slopes. is not zero. Now, uh, again, I explained this in class. What does this mean? L row 21, all the slopes of the X terms are zero. What that saying is the model brackets the equation. Oh, what do I mean by that? I said equations there. The model of the equation is no good. Now, for every single question, it's always the same. That you, it doesn't matter what it is, you write that down. Okay. Now, so HO is the null hypothesis. HA is the alternative hypothesis. So HO is the model is no good. And HA is the model is some good at least. Now, without going any further, we think the model is pretty good already. How do we know that? Because the R squared value is 99.38 or whatever it is, 99.38%. So it's very, very high. So we expect to be rejecting the null hypothesis. So the degrees of freedom are, sorry, typing them, please. Two comma 10. How, why are they two comma 10? Because go back to the spreadsheet. Uh, that's the first degree of freedom, that's the second degree of freedom. Again, every single time, the first degree of freedom is 2, the second degree of freedom is 10. I have, I don't have the Neve one exactly, but I have one that'll do it. So there it is, there's the critical value for 5%, 2, 10. And just where the mouse is there, 4.10. Critical value. Uh, 
B minus one and then sorry, made made a mistake. Apologies. It's one nine. So you look up here, apologies, so you look up here, it's two ten, so it's it's that minus one and it's 10 minus 1, so 2 minus 1 is 1, and 10 minus 1 is 9, so it's 1, 9, I forgot it's so long since I've done it, so it's 1, 9, and the critical value there is 5.12. Now, normally on the board, normally I'd sketch this on the board, but I can't sketch here, because time is pressing. So, uh, conclusion our FIU uh, and our value FIU is up here at 802.791 is much much larger than the crit file of 5.12 therefore we have very strong reason to reject H0 null hypothesis now just to you know, catch our breath we're saying that the probability where we have a, there's a very strong probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. There's a very strong probability of rejecting the notion that the model is useless. A double negative. We're fairly sure that the model is not useless. In other words, it's good. But it's just the way this thing works, how the statisticians work. So just emphasize that again. The net result is we're very sure that the model is good or or you want to cover yourself. We're rejecting the idea that the model is useless. In other words, it's good. Okay. Uh, try and find the exam paper now. Uh, where's the exam paper? Oh yeah, there we are. So we've done A, we've done B. Part C now. Let's look at the part. If the model utility test uh, was carried at one percent, would we be more or less likely to reject the null hypothesis? So, little comment here. Part C. Let's go and look at the exam papers. Or not the exam papers, the solutions. There's five percent. There's one percent, and the critical value for one nine is ten point five six. In case I'm going too fast, one nine, ten point five six. So now, obviously, uh, what's the number? Eight hundred eight hundred two is bigger than 10.96, so we reject another hypothesis, but it's not as, you know, 802 is not bigger, slow down, 802 is bigger than 10.96, but it's not, and also 802 is bigger than 5.12, but not as big. Does that make any sense? 802.79 is bigger than 10.96, 802 is bigger than 5.12, but not by as much, so. as the margin between 802.791 and 10.96 not as big and 5.12 hope that makes a lot of sense. You'd still reject it, because obviously 802 is way bigger than 10.96, but it's not as 
big as 802.791 compared to 5.12. Now I know there's a lot of stuff going on with stats and probabilities, and but I'm only just trying to give a brief, a brief idea here. Let's try and find the exam paper. We've done A, we've done B, we've done C, we've done D, we've E, what's E about again, remind me, if R squared was 1, now if R squared was 1, that means the points lie in the line exactly, they lie in the line exactly, so in other words, there would be no error, and if there's no error, this guy here, where the mouse is where I'm there. That's zero, so the only other possibility then is this. Remember we said that this guy plus this guy equals that guy. If that guy is zero, well then this guy must equal this guy. Slow down again. This guy plus this guy equals this guy. If this guy is zero, well then this guy must equal that guy. So, what I'm going to say is some squared model equals SS total. Now you'd want to write down in the exam paper why, but I'm just, you know, having a brief go with it here. And part F, what's the F? Part F is, what is the, what does this do? The F value here. F value here. And I say the F value is the ratio of fit over non-fit. Yeah, oops, sorry. Obviously in any measurement or any system there's going to be a certain amount of just wrong figures or incorrectness. So it's a ratio of how well the points fit the line compared to how well the points don't fit the line. Now obviously you want the ratio to be as big as possible because the, the bigger they fit, the smaller the non-fit. When you end up dividing a big number by a small number so you'll get a very big number at the end. So the bigger the F value is, the more R squared will lie towards 1. Okay, hope that helps a little. Thanks very much for listening.